In this lesson, we're going to introduce more formally uh, the notion of this induced voltage, this induced EMF, and Faraday's law. Now, there are some subtleties here, so let, let me explain to you what I mean by I want you to think of the induced voltage uh, as not being real, and I put real in quotes. The voltage itself is real to the extent that it will produce a current in a coil when we wave the magnet uh, beneath it like we did in our, our first lesson. So it is certainly real from that aspect. But it is not real in that there's not an EMF source like a battery to, us, to assign the voltage to. So for us, we are going to think of this EMF voltage as an assigned value in a region of space, so it's a, it's a little subtle, in the region of space where the wire sits, regardless of whether the wire is there or not to produce the current. So it, it, there's, there's a little bit more here to it uh, going on, but for right now, we're going to think of it as an assigned voltage value that creates this I-induced when the wire is there to produce it, to generate the B-induced, to fight the effect that's causing the induced current to be there. Now, Ohm's law, so please get this down, Ohm's law still works for induced voltage. If there's a resistor in that coil, the current, the induced current, will behave through the resistor according to voltage equals IR. So the voltage across the resistor is still IR based on the induced current and that resistor. As we said in our first lesson, uh, Faraday's law is absolutely an experimental result. So what was observed by Faraday experimentally is that we get this induced voltage, right? This induced voltage, and it is going to equal negative. Mathematically, it is going to equal negative. Whoops, I want that in blue negative the time rate of change of the magnetic flux through the coil. Now, the negative is there that is going to, and it's going to act in a mathematical sense to indicate that this voltage is a restoring effect. It wants to fight the effect that's causing it. And we've seen a negative as a restoring uh, parameter, as, an, as a restoring aspect uh, to systems when we did Hooke's Law and spring. So let me just quickly remind you that the, the spring force, Hooke's Law, the force of a spring equals minus kx. And the spring is very much a mechanical analog to what is going on here with the electromagnetic flux or the, the this voltage flux, the, the induced EMF. So the stretch of the spring, the X, the stretch of the spring that causes the force, right? There's no force without a stretch. The stretch of the spring causes the force, but the spring reacts to try to restore the system back to equilibrium, back to X equals zero. So we've seen this notion before mechanically. We just haven't seen it in terms of our electricity and magnetism. So in a very real sense, we're going to continue uh, talking about this type of restoring effect uh, that we have with the spring uh, in talking about what happens with the production of the induced EMF. So let, let's continue on. So what, what are the possible situations for changing magnetic flux? Well, flux is flux, whether it's magnetic flux or electric flux. It's B dot N hat dA for magnetic flux. Remember, it was E dot N hat dA for electric flux. Well, it's a dot product. So we have that magnetic flux is the B field, right, times the area. So the B field times the area times the cosine of the angle between the B field and the N hat vector, which is the area vector drawn from a common origin. So it doesn't matter which one of those is changing. So please make sure you get all of this into your notes. It doesn't matter which one changes. So B can be changing with time as it was when we moved the, the permanent magnet towards the coil. 
We could have the area itself change. We could let it shrink down or expand, and that certainly would generate the current. Uh, or we could have the angle between the B field and the, uh, the area, the n hat vector, change with time. And when we have our spinning turbines, that's exactly what happens. So for spinning coils, the angle is changing between the, the B field and the area. But it doesn't matter which changes. One of them has to be changing, right? At least one of them. And overall, the flux has to be changing. Well, Faraday's result, negative deflux dt, is for a single coil. So if we have n coils, the total uh, voltage induced EMF will equal negative n the number of turns. And if it's a number of if it's uh, coils all lined up, that, that becomes a solenoid. So our coils all lie wrapped together. So we can think of the n turns of a solenoid, and so a solenoid will become our baseline. Uh, device that is called an inductor, where this induced voltage and this induced current is produced. But mathematically, uh, this is what we are going to use, Faraday's law. Just like we used Hooke's law as an experimental result, we didn't think about a proof theoretically, fundamentally, why it had to be that. Hooke said that I've done all these experiments with springs, and that's how springs behave. Faraday did all of these experiments with magnetic fields and coils and said, this is how nature behaves. You get this induced voltage in a coil that produces an induced current that makes an induced B field to fight the changing flux. So again, I know this is somewhat new to us. Um, we are going to do more with it and more specific examples to get a better feel for what is going on. But just like with springs, it takes a little bit of letting your mind uh, adapt to how the spring works as a, as a restoring, restorative aspect. The same thing is going on with induced EMF. So we will continue on.